All right, so the secret to a perfect pot roast is a hell of a lot easier than you actually think, right? Think of it as it is what you do to the ingredients that makes all the difference. So there's no overly complicated cooking techniques, nor is there any fancy ingredients that you need to get. There's a shopping list right there. Very, very simple, very, very basic, delicious. One of the most important things to keep in mind, if not the most important thing, is cooking with room temperature meat. It's gonna allow you to get a very nice sear on the outside of the pot roast, giving it even more flavor, you know what I mean? So as this is coming up through room temperature, right, the first thing you wanna do is sprinkle it really generously with salt. Before we go to sear this off, we're actually gonna wanna pat it dry completely with a paper towel, you know? Because we don't wanna be searing meat that has any kind of liquid on it. And I like going really heavy with the black pepper, right? This thing has more than one side, so you wanna make sure to get all sides of that, of course. Salt, pepper. About an hour, this is gonna come up to room temperature, all right? So set that aside. So if you put a wet paper towel underneath the cutting board, it'll keep it from not slipping around. First, you're gonna cut up a yellow sweet onion. Sharp knife, always a sharp knife. Then you need to have some sort of a little bowl just to keep your vegetable scraps in. You know, later on I'm gonna chuck it in the compost. It really just helps keep your work area nice and clean, you know what I mean? Clean, methodical, organized. So cut the onion in half, remove that paper, and then slice it once horizontally. So if you keep the knife right against your finger like that, you'll have a better chance of never cutting yourself. A lot of practice, you'll never cut yourself. Having a bench scraper will help you pick up your ingredients a lot easier. Just kind of scoop them up. Right off the head of the garlic. Garlic is always best when you pull it right off the head like that. There's no really fancy way of peeling garlic. Just give it a light smash and peel the outer paper layer off. Garlic has a root end too, so you need to chop that off. Seven leaves of fresh sage, roll them up tightly like you're rolling a cigar or whatever, and then just chop it. Don't over chop your herbs. They have nice flavorful oils in them. So the more you chop them, the more that oil gets released. So we're trying to season our pot roast, not the cutting board, you know what I mean? All right, makes sense. Carrots. Just go for some fatties. All you really need to do with these, chop off both ends. And then just kind of cut them up into chunks like that. And then the potatoes. These are baby gold potatoes. You don't need to do a whole lot to these. You don't need to peel them. You don't need to cut them. They're just delicious as they are. Starch content on these are really nice. They're sweet and they have a nice potato flavor. Their texture on them is just nice and buttery smooth. And I fucking love these. So this is our mise en place, you know what I mean? So chop everything up before you even think about starting to cook. Everything is within arm's reach. It's nice and smooth, nice and seamless, perfect execution. Preheat the Dutch oven, rip it on high heat, the highest heat it'll go. You can probably see that this has some moisture that's been released from that salt. So before we do start to sear this off, make sure to pat it dry, completely dry. I want to have a nice caramelized crust on the outside of all sides of this pot roast. You know, it has four sides on it, obviously. There's a lot of surface area and a lot of opportunity for incredible flavor, you know what I mean? So this thing is nice and hot. You put your hand over the, just above the surface of the Dutch oven, and you tell it's getting hot. Like I said, you want to pat this dry really, really well before we put it into that pan. Into the Dutch oven, about two tablespoons of a neutral oil. This has a high smoke point on it, canola oil is what I like to use. Drop it in. You want to hear that nice sizzle that it has. Magic in the making. 
they have the pan hot enough, it should only take about a minute and a half, maybe even two minutes per side. You want to get that nice, beautiful caramelized crust on the outside of it. Ooh. That is a nice looking crust on there. Give you an overhead shot of what that looks like right now. Beautiful. That is just flavor ready to rip. Hold up on the side for you know a couple seconds. Sear all the sides. That's what you're looking for right there. That's the good stuff. So set that meat aside. Drop in the onions, all of them. Keep the fat in the pot. Onions have a nice amount of natural sweetness to them, so as soon as they hit that Dutch oven, I give them a nice pinch of kosher salt. We're essentially layering flavors right now. The salt's gonna pull out that beautiful natural sweetness that the onions have out, right? I mean, if you season properly in layers, you're not gonna be able to taste salty food at the end. If you season in layers, you're gonna be really amplifying the natural flavor of the food, right? If you wait to season till the very end, you're just gonna end up with salty tasting food, if that makes sense. Which is kind of part of the secret to making a perfect pot roast is, you know, cooking with room temperature pot roast, letting it sit with that salt for about an hour. Let's say the salt's gonna penetrate the actual, you know, exterior of the meat, flavoring it. And we're seasoning everything in layers, adding even more flavor to the final product. You know what I mean? Sweat them down till they're translucent. That'll take about a minute and a half, two minutes or so. Drop in the garlic. I like to hit the garlic with a little pinch of salt too. And then about a tablespoon of butter. I cut the butter up in a way that I know that it's a tablespoon. So you're just looking to cook the fragrance off the garlic. Cabernet Sauvignon. I mean, just cook with wine that you like to drink. $10 bottle of wine, nothing super crazy, you know what I mean? It's a nice drinking wine. I mean, that's just my rule is if you like to drink the wine, then you, it's good enough to cook with, you know what I mean? Just so stay away from cooking wines, obviously. Deglaze the Dutch oven with about half a glass worth of that wine. Cook it off until it reduces by half, until the alcohol gets cooked off, basically. Fond is the caramelized bits from when we seared off that chuck roast, you know what I mean? So that's just even more flavor. So I'm using the wine that I deglaze the pan with to get up those pieces of yummy goodness on the bottom of that pot. Cooking is easy, so. Ah, that smells so good. Fresh sage, love me some fresh sage. You could use rosemary, sage, thyme, combination of them, parsley, kind of whatever it is that you fancy. And then four cups of beef stock, it's gonna go in. All these rest and juices from that chuck rolls goes in next. And don't really worry about caramelizing carrots. Drop those in and drop in your potatoes. So whenever you're cooking a pot roast, you wanna make sure that you have something acidic to put in there. You could use tomato paste, you could use wine, you could use citrus, you know, orange, lemon, that kind of thing. Something just acidic, because the acidity is gonna break down the proteins in the meat, making it even more tender, right? Finish it, a little bit of black pep. Ooh. Mmm, that's so fucking good, man. Need a little bit more salt, a little bit more pep. I like going heavy on the black pepper though, I love it. So kind of do whatever it is that you want to do with that. I like to completely submerge the meat in the cooking liquid when I'm making a pot roast. I mean, braising, you know, technically you're supposed to cover the liquid about three quarters of the way up the meat. When I'm doing a pot roast, I want to have that thing completely encapsulated in that cooking liquid. And plus, this liquid's going to reduce over the course of two and a half, three hours. So you want to make sure to have plenty of your cooking liquid in there. You don't want to try. You don't want to run out of liquid. Mm. We are onto something good right there. So just bring this up to a boil. Once it comes up to a boil, kill the heat, put a lid on it, chuck it in the oven, 275 degrees. And that's gonna go for about three hours. Now, it really depends on how big the chuck roast is. Mine's a two pounder, so I generally go about two and a half, three hours, something like that. If you're closer to like three, maybe four pounds, 
then you definitely want to increase 45 minutes per pound. That's kind of how I like to go off of it. Where you know when it's ready to go is it's gonna be, you know, easily shredded apart, but you don't want to overcook it because then it becomes like, I mean, you could tear, you could pair, you could tear it apart, but it becomes like kind of chewy, you know, which is not really good. So once the cooking liquid does come up to a boil, go ahead and put your lid on the cooking vessel and make sure that you leave a little bit of an opening that way steam can escape. In a preheated oven, set to 275 degrees, let that rip for two and a half to three hours. I checked this at the two and a half hour mark and I'm checking the tenderness with two forks and see how easily it'll pull apart. It still has too much resistance to it, so I'm gonna go ahead and let this rip for another 45 minutes. Cooking times obviously may vary depending on how good or not your oven is. Once the pot roast is finished and nice and tender and easily could be pulled apart, go ahead and let rest on a cutting board. I'm doing that because I want to use the cooking liquid and thicken it up to make a beautiful gravy. I mean, you can go ahead and just use the liquid as is, just in case you want to know how to thicken it up really quickly, let's do it. My preferred method is making a roux. Add three tablespoons of unsalted butter to a small stock pot set to medium low heat. I'm just going to let it melt until it starts to foam. Once the butter has melted and is foamy, go ahead and add three tablespoons of AP flour. That is equal parts butter and flour. Whisk the flour into the butter and make sure there is not any clumps. We want to cook the roux for three to five minutes over medium low heat, whisking occasionally. You want to make sure that the roux does not burn. I'm going to go for a blonde roux. Essentially, it's going to be the same color as a lightly colored peanut butter. Now this part is pretty important. You want to make sure that that cooking liquid is still warm and you're going to add it slowly but surely into the roux, whisking it thoroughly before you add any more. So as you're adding more of that cooking liquid, you're whisking it until the roux becomes a nice thick paste. Slowly but surely, keep adding little amounts of the cooking liquid to the roux, whisking it thoroughly before adding any more of the liquid. Now we want to put the remainder of the cooking liquid back onto the burner, still set to medium low heat, and add what was in that small stock pot to the rest of the cooking liquid. Now bring our newly made gravy up to a simmer, and that's going to be the thickness that it's going to be. You could choose to reduce it if you want a little bit thicker, or just go as is. I like my gravies to be a little on the thinner side. Taste the gravy and adjust seasoning as necessary. Now to plate, go ahead and grab a couple spoonfuls of the carrots and the potatoes, and there's going to be some onions that are stuck in the strainer, so I go ahead and spoon some of those out because those are fabulous flavor. Cut off a generous portion of that pot roast, put it on the plate, and top it with that homemade gravy. I love me a good pot roast, and I make it very consistently in the wintertime, and definitely in the summertime as well. I mean, it's really good any time of year. I like serving it with a nice glass of that red wine that I used in the cooking liquid. It definitely adds a nice touch to it, and of course, some freshly cracked black pepper on top. This is such a delicious pot roast. I love the carrots, and I love the potatoes, and I love the gravy. A very, very tender piece of meat, and it's just going to literally fall apart. Very, very tender. Very, very delicious. You'll absolutely love it. Such a perfect dish, especially with a nice glass of red wine, and of course, it makes your house smell absolutely incredible. Cheers to that. As always, the written recipe will be in the description for you, so go ahead and jot that down and get to cooking.